Hey guys, um, we got an absolute banger for you guys today. Uh, currently, I'm on a plane heading out west to go snowboarding uh, with my family, with my uh, cousins. Uh, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, but I'm going to be bringing you, I'm going to be uploading this video right now um, on Tuesday, January 2nd. Today is currently the 31st, so this is the last day of 2023. But uh, when you guys watch this, this will be a trading day, uh, first trading day of 2024. So, uh, I'm super stoked. I'm bringing you together my top stock picks for 2024. What I'm thinking, how, how we value things, and really what I'm looking at. So, if you guys just want to, there's a ton of stocks I have on this list. Uh, my top three stock picks, just so if you just were looking for that, are Mara, uh, number one, CleanSpark, number two, MicroStrategy, number three. Uh, with a tie between micro strategies and riot. Um, I just believe crypto in itself in 2024 is going to go insane. I think 2025 as well it will. But um, I, at least for the first half of it, substantial half of it, uh, see what we can do. I probably get up way well past 100,000. I foresee easily. So uh, we'll see what happens into 2025 with the having with everything. But I want to talk to you about what I'm thinking, market cycles, and how really we are going to value these companies. So I have this uh, Teladoc up here. Uh, we can talk about this one first just because it's here. Uh, market cap of $3.57 billion. And you go back to the five year on this thing. And this thing was all the way up at, at almost 300. So a 10X from $20 would put them at 35 billion. I don't see why this company can't get to 70 to $80 billion um, in this next market cycle. I think it's extremely undervalued. Uh, a reasonable amount of shorts are in this company. Uh, it's being very high. And what happened is you have to understand what is the market thinking? Uh, so that's why I want to emphasize what do we think the market, what's happening in 2024 and what was happening in 2020, 2021? Well, what we saw is a, a new market cycle of innovation in tech and low interest rates. 0% interest rates are the most favorable for, for growth companies that are borrowing debt. The government printed trillions of dollars. Every country printed money, uh, racked up insane debt levels um, farther than uh, accelerated debt levels. So debt levels that were accelerating on an exponential curve up, and then we heightened that exponential curve up, right? So that that is what governments did uh, to uh, kind of combat COVID, locking them all down and everything like that. So what we saw in the market was everybody wanted growth. Everybody wanted this. They were betting on different companies that were tech-based online. Um, and you saw this market cycle and, and conditions, market conditions were perfect. So what you really want to see is every stock, every company will, will trade in market cycles. So there will be upper waves when the, the market conditions, the stock market itself is good. Um, and then when the stock market's bad, high interest rates, um, like market uncertainties, uh, everything like that. Uh, and then your company will trade in this wavelength um, with it relative to its sector and its individual company rankings, right? So your company could be doing amazing, but the stock market's not doing well at all. It's tanking and your stock's just sitting at a normal basis, but it's relatively very high to other companies, right? So each, each sector is good and I, it's just easiest for me to say, hey, look, I'm not going to try and pinpoint three different sectors because like the likelihood is if one sector is the highest it will have the highest percentage gain stock so that's why i'm saying the crypto sector i think it's going to have the highest percentage gains but we have a bunch of stocks to get into uh today one of them like i said teladoc uh, this was the last one i added onto my list i really love the 3.57 billion market cap there's some sells this was back in october by basically the start of december and some hold ratings at uh, were placed on the same time. I think that was probably right around earnings, right? So uh, I think this company's trailed off a lot. I think it's at a very attractive valuation. Um, and I think the market con conditions are going to set up for a big bull run. Before I get into any other stocks, what I want to look at is like I'm talking about market conditions. Let's look at the Dow Jones. Let's take it out to the monthly. The Dow Jones is sitting at all time highs, very explosive. SPY, 
similar thing I want to emphasize SPY and Dow Jones are kind of Dow Jones is like your safest your 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 consumer your cyclical your money spending stocks uh, SPY is a little bit more tech heavy but still the similar then there's NASDAQ higher tech and, and then the Russell 2000 which we're going to get to last um, is, is like your volatile so tech still well off all time highs did they go up way more? Yes, because tech is a higher gains in proper market conditions than Dow Jones. Whereas the market conditions we have seen, they sold off more and they recovered less, right? Um, now, recently, they've been recovering more. And when we saw that the, they started slowing interest rate hikes, this is when we saw a more explosive run than the Dow Jones. And when we get back to the Russell 2000, well, well off, even worse than the NASDAQ in terms of not as sharp gains, more sell-offs, and less run. What, but look at this explosive four monther that we had, probably more explosive than even the NASDAQ. Never saw as explosive of, as a run as we did in the Russell 2000 in that same time period. So what, what, what does that mean? Like, okay, so what? what? What does that logically mean? So what that means is the Dow Jones is consumers ha have been holding up better. So, and, and, and you got to ask yourself, well, well, what even does that mean and, and why? And the answer is my best answer that I can give. And some people give you different answers. But what, that, what does that mean to me? That means that people, because there is more money on the stock market, some, the money has to go somewhere. But there's, very, there's not much debt anymore because interest rates are so high. So when interest rates start coming down, what do I expect to flourish at a percentage gain more? I expect the NASDAQ and the Russell 2000 to flourish as interest rates begin to get cut. And this will be an explosive time period because these companies, these more growth oriented companies, tech companies ha that have hyper valuations up and hyper valuations down um, are, be be are because they can now borrow debt. Now, where did the money go? What, what, what took all the money? Well, semiconductors flourished in this time. Uh, semiconductors never really sold off as much and are pushing insane valuations. And why is that? Well, they are s some of the safest growth stocks that you can own. They have, they have high potential to grow. They're, they're semiconductors, they're, they're innovative tech, um, high growth probability, high growth potential, and they're safe because everybody needs them, right? And we've seen this AI push. We've seen this market cycle, market cycle of semiconductors pushing up like we go to the nvidia charts on the monthly super semiconductor push up we can look at amd not as much but still super semiconductor push up what else do we got avgo super oh sorry got caps locked on there um super semiconductor push up and these monthlies are just ridiculous, especially compared to almost every other real asset in the market. And this is because there's this huge push for innovative tech, this push for, for cloud computing, for Bitcoin mining, for, for uh, remote car driving. There's a push for semiconductors. Um, so, so the semiconductors got to make them. They got to they, and they're going to make the money. Right. So this 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 set of growth money, this trade money comes into the market. Right now, what do I expect? Now, I, I expect market conditions to, to flourish. So I expect there's no way I, I'm going to be betting against these companies that are at, even though they're at ridiculous valuations, like 70 price to sales on NVIDIA, uh, like 60 forward P, like, like just foul numbers for a trillion dollar company. And but why is it there? Well, well, there's growth, there's people buying them, people are going to be continuing buying them. And there's always going to be a renewal of chips. Now, I don't think there's going to be that influx of, of new buyers and new consumers to continue their growth numbers. And when their growth numbers start to fade, that's when the investors start falling out. They start selling, the shorts come in. Um, so I expect in good market conditions, they kind of hover around this range and could even trend up a bit more. And I really don't want to get into this because, uh, or, or short into this when I, I think the market's going up. Right, that would just be stupid. I'm going against what I'd say. So, I'm heavily prepared to short AVGO, AMD, and Nvidia. They're my three biggest, my three favorite. Short the heck out of these companies, but I'm not going to short them yet because I think the market still has a lot of room to come back. 
to go up. And I don't think these are going to, by no means am I saying buy these companies. By no means am I saying buy these companies. And if you're buying these companies and, and you're not looking for just trade gains in terms of, oh, it's a break point, let, let's, let's get in and get out. Um, I, I don't think, I think you're just making a donation of your money to the market. Um, because when, when these big funds cycle out, you're just going to be stuck um, holding shares at, at a stupid valuation. So I wouldn't go long in terms of like a long-term investing. Um, any like th- These are just at stupid valuations. Um, uh, bad, and they're not going to continue these growth prospects. And when their growth prospects fade at stupid valuations, you, you see bigger declines, right? So... That's what I think about these semiconductor stocks. I used to love them. I loved them back in 2020, 2021. I thought they were very nicely valued, um, but, but just not anymore. Uh, they're, just, they're just too high. Uh, there's going to be some market turmoil. And in 2024, I'm stoked. So why am I so bullish about 2024? Most important part on high growth, uh, high leverage, low market cap stocks Interest rates coming down is the best possible thing. And obviously the interest rates won't be going down, but the, the thought of, of there is being new money in the market. There's, you got to understand the interest rates went to all-time highs and our market has held all-time highs. Why is that? Is because there is more money in the market. And this money gets placed in bonds, gold, Bitcoin, uh, like just global assets They hold they, that hold value. And when there's more assets to be bought, uh, people are continuously doing work. Um, the, the, the assets in the economy uh, go up, right? And so the amount of value that AVGO holds will go up because, because they have been working, producing work, everything like that. And there's just more dollars to buy that. So, so their revenue is going to go up. People, it comes into the consumers and then the money hits their bank accounts after a couple of years. And then they start spending that money that they now have that's fake. And then that money goes into the company's earnings and then the companies produce better earnings. And then there's better growth project, pro- projections for the future because they're, high, they're uh, increasing their cost on what they're selling you. So... Those are the three companies that I'm looking to short, and but I and where I think the the short time is is going to be up in, in towards elections. I think before elections, they're going to bolster the economy, make it look good. I think we have interest rates coming down. I think we have more money in the economy. I think we have wars in other people's countries. Who are the biggest countries? Russia, China, America. They have the biggest economies, most people, biggest militaries. When has there ever been a war in China, Russia, or, or America on their soil? Not in a while. Not in a very long time. Where do they fight these wars? On other people's land, right? So they're, they're, and, and what does war do if it's not fought on your land? Well, you're basically destroying rubbish, right? So then you can rebuild back better. But, but you're able to build and have an excuse to, to, to increase debt, uh, ramp up production, get more people working, uh, create value in your economy with fake money. So I believe a lot of this fake money is going to hit the market, especially the crypto market. That's my number one. But I think this money, this fake money has came into these semiconductor stocks because they've been safer, because they they have good growth projections. And this is where safe money wants to be. And companies that have money, have good growth projections and are currently doing well, um, they can have stupid valuations when there's just more money to buy these companies, right? Uh, now, they don't have very good cash position. Like, they have reasonable cash position. They don't need more. But but compared to their valuation, terrible, right? So let's get into these AI companies. And this is these are the companies that bought your um, semiconductors. These are the companies that are purchasing your, your computing power and, and now are trying to apply it to the real world. Now, every time a company IPOs, you can look at Coinbase, you can look at... Almost any company, even like, let's say Uber, or let's, let's even do Snapchat. Look at this. Snapchat, look at this. IPO'd, came down, came back up, all-time highs. It's, it's like a cycle of money. Um, a firm. Now, pumped up, came down. Poss- I would hate this to reach all-time highs, but we never know, right? Like, this, this, is, this is in the same form. Dropbox, a worse one, came down. Now, now Dropbox has been a worse one. Like I said, some companies perform better and, and worse relatively, but looking to come back up, uh, forecast very high, right? So just any real company, like even Facebook, really. Now, well, not really. Oh, what's FBK? I don't even know. 
Oh, it's meta now. I'm so stupid. Came down, reached all-time highs, and just sailed, right? So this was an exception, but almost every company that IPOs really has a substantial sell-off, right? Um, because they're just misvalued. They're trying to get extra money. They're, that's why they're listing on the market. They don't really want the consumer to own their company. They're just like upstarts an exception, but they've came down a lot. Look at them. Came down way lower and reach could reach. So each company usually has at some point in time a liquidity gap sell-off to, to what their real valuation probably should have been, right? So uh, I really think that my top three are, are – Going to be Path. I love this company. I think their their AI technology and capabilities are, are going to be insane. They have a reasonable valuation. The market likes them. But but really, what I'm looking at is 14 billion dollars um, for a tech company that that's not losing money um, that much. They have a good cash cash position. Um, like this valuation to me. Very, very nice, right? I could easily see these companies going up to 150 billion, right? So valuations like this in good market conditions in an AI squeeze, I don't think we've seen an AI squeeze. I think we saw a semiconductor squeeze on AI companies purchasing chips. Uh, if you want to talk about really bad valuation companies, like I just talked about, AMD, NVIDIA, AVGO. You want to talk about even worse valuations? We can start talking about Snowflake, Datadog, Zscaler, maybe even CrowdStrike. Now, I like CrowdStrike a bit more, but those are companies that are just even more ridiculous than the semi semiconductors, I want to say. Now, do I think they're going to be good uh, under good market conditions? Absolutely, and I think there's more money chasing them, and I do think they're going to be good future companies, but um, you price, price those companies at six, 600 or $60 billion, and you only price this one at $15 billion when this has just as much potential to be making the same, if not more. It's just a bad misvaluation, and, and I, I think that the market is event is looking to come into that. Look at this. It got all the way up. Oh, no, this was upstart. Sorry. Path. We're, we're looking to break it. We have a massive liquidity gap to fill. So, super stoked uh, about, really, um, Path, and... Now, this is a kind of a bearish formation on the downtrend, a lot of red, but I really think you can get in at a 22, maybe even a gap fill to $20 would be just fantastic for, for a long-term share buy. And I really just love the, the prospects. Where do I think the market... I, all I'm guessing is, is market money is going to cycle into to AI. Why do I think that? Well, market money cycled into semiconductors. Now the semiconductors are very high. The, the money is very high in that. Well... What's next? Well, all the companies that bought the semiconductors because they're going to be using that computing power to like make money, right? That, that, that's the purpose. That, that's the thought. And now we saw this with semiconductors. Uh, that was semiconductors were 2023. Guess what 2022 was? Tesla, right? Um, maybe if I could sell, spell Tesla, right? Uh, Tesla, right? Tesla. Whoo! Insane. Now there is this falling wedge and... There's no reason for me to, to believe that, that Tesla at an $800 billion valuation, even in good market conditions, is really going to go up. I, I expect that the re Republicans do not favor electric vehicles. So, and my th thesis is, like I said, three months prior to elections, I want to start building up cash. There's going to be high market volatility. I'm going to get dips that I can buy, and I'm going to get spikes that I can sell. Um, I, the, the content uh, towards elections into election season is going to go insane. We're, we're, like The amount of money that we are going to be raking in in election season is going to be ridiculous. And until that like three-month kind of period where, where we then sell everything and look to just hit dips and sell, sell like overbuys, um, I plan on just accumulating crypto cash. I, I just And I'm going to hold my crypto, and my crypto is just going to be money – to make more money off of. It's just gonna be like my cash supply. I, I get a little bit less leverage because it's in a stock and not in a cash supply because it could drop, right? So, but I will have enough money from my crypto that any trade that we really wanna make, we can make. So, so I'm super pumped that this 2024 interest rates coming down election year, one of the most crucial election years in probably the history of the U.S. They're trying to get the previous president off the ballot, and the current president has dementia, 
Like it, it is an insane time to exist. Crypto Bitcoin having coming in, global crypto adoption, wars. In, like we have so many immigrants in our countries, but there's so many Jews and Palestinians. So you can't even, and the, I'm in Canada. Think about it in the States and all these other countries. Um, there's like a, a mixed, a division amongst the people. That creates volatility. There is going to be crumbling. And when something crumbles, something else always rises up above it, right? That's why we tore it down. What I expect, now it is sloping on this uptrend, right? Flushes. GG, goodbye. We're hitting bottom barrier of this candle. Could be 177. Now, under good market conditions, we'll see. But Tesla, insane breakout trend in January. We're going to really see where Tesla can go. But this breakout could be like a failed breakout skimper up around here and, and drop hard, especially above this line that I drawn. This is like the medium point, the 250 mark. It's the our bull side, bear side, right? So could scamper up in here. This would be in, into April and we 280, 280 mark and we could fall hard, right? Um, but I'm not buying Tesla. I think it's overvalued. And what I really think is what I'm looking at is I don't think it's on its market cycle, right? I think this company ha has room to fall down into this $150 range. And with that, we will be rewarded with a very nice buy. I think Tesla's volatility is not yet over. Trading Tesla options is going to be uh, still insane in the future. And it's still a volatile company. Like, look, it, it has ranges. It, it moves a lot. Like, day to day, it's still, like, very highly volume, highly traded. And I just see a lot of bearish movement on it and I, I see it pulling down into this trend line i don't see reason for it to even though i think the market is high it's just it's not in a bullish sentiment it's in a bear sentiment and there's going to be if the republicans are looking that like they could win this election it's not going to fare well with with um ev rules the, the republicans are not as favorable towards clean energy because i don't think their politicians have as much money invested in it um so what I expect is Tesla to come back to a reasonable valuation, and but I really like to buy it. I really like to buy Tesla. Um, I just don't want to buy it up here. I, I want to buy it um, down at 170, right? Sub 200, right? Sub 200. I'm not paying above 200 bucks a share for Tesla. Don't, uh, don't kid me on that. It's like well over a thousand pre-split. That's like 2,000 pre-split, right? I want to get this back into the $100 range. Um, and then I look to add a position accumulatively because if it's under 200, it's going to be in a bear face. So I'm going to slowly 25 shares here, 25 shares here, right? Compound my money. And maybe I pick up three, 400 Tesla shares and it goes back up to five, 600 bucks and I'm selling premium. I'm uh, thank you for the donation, right? So couple of last stocks on the list here. I know I, I'm taking a, a while right now. I'm just firing. But I like Palantir not as much as I like these other companies. But I don't mind it. it, it I do think that the, the sentiment is going to be AI. There's going to be a push towards AI. And, and it's just like Mara. There, there's no... The, the biggest dog is going to be the most overvalued um, in terms of a dollar basis, right? Um, now, from a percentage basis on what its fair value is, maybe not. It's gonna, there's going to be some that come up and get more overvalued in a, in a percentage basis. But in terms of a dollar value, how much you're paying overpriced, Palantir is the biggest dog. It's like Mara, right? <coughs> so I think Palantir is a buy. It's a big dog. It's the, the, the company that is like, it's like NVIDIA. Are you going to buy AMD, AVGO, Micron, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor? Are you going to buy NVIDIA, right? This is like the NVIDIA of it, right? Versus buying uh, a more of a riskier semiconductor um, in terms of tech AI, right? So, so I, I like them a lot. This is, this is my buy. But, but just remember, you're paying for You're looking for money, right? That's all we're looking for. We don't care about the valuation of the company. We don't care about the company itself. We care about making money. That's why we show up. That's why we're here. That's why we're, we're trading the stock market. We, we want to take somebody else's money and make it our own money. That's, it's, it's the game. And the game that I think will be played is Palantir will go up. I just... I think it's in the right sector, right? And I think sector guessing or sector predicting is one of the most important parts. And, and applying that to your strategy, there's so many things that go into making money in the stock market and, and so many things that you, you just got could be wrong on. Like you could just be like some average guy say, hey, look, I want to buy this much. 
call me in 10 years. And you're likely going to make money because there's likely just going to be more money in the market, right? And then you spread that around. Hey, look, I want to spread that around 10 stocks. You're likely to make money. Now, we're trying to make as much money as possible. There's people who show up and trade options all the time. And that's how you make the highest percentage gains because it is leveraged money. You were, you were technically allowed to buy, let's say, 100 shares of a company that's worth 200 bucks for $1. So you, so you can leverage your money by 200 times theoretically, right? If you were to buy 100 shares or you could buy 2,000 shares, right? So, um, or 20,000, sorry. Um, and what you want to think about here is what are the market conditions? 0% interest rates. Market conditions... Six and a half percent interest rates. Market conditions. Now, more money in the market. Tech AI. Pretty good, right? This company, going to be like a linear line up, right? Now, it's going to wave up, wave up, wave down, wave up, wave down. But like the R squared value, it's going to be like a 0 0.99, right? From down here. Uh, and that's with interest rates coming down, more money coming into the market. Um, I just, they, they, there's going to be a very fast chase in 2024, 2025, FOMO to chase assets. Uh, I think people are going to get very scared. The companies have been mis or governments have been mismanaging the, the people's money. And people like going to work and making money, but they want their money to mean something. They want to enjoy it. They want to go on vacation. They want to do stuff, right? And as the, the, these countries are devaluing their dollars at record rates, uh, people are going to, to rush to buy assets. Um, at some point, there's, when it hits media, it's going to rush to buy assets, right? There's going to be a FOMO of where do I put my money? I can't buy a house. I can't get a loan. I got to buy assets, right? I got to buy cryptocurrency. I got to buy the small cryptos. I got to just gamble, gamble my life away. And there's going to be this rush. And this is where we capitalize on people's emotional behaviors. Um, and that's why I think 2024, there's going to be so much volatility and money coming in in the first part um, and a lot of money coming out in the up until elections, into elections. And most likely, I'm just going to rebuy because no matter who wins the election after the turmoil comes out, the market should push up. Right. And I think 2025 is going to be another big bullish year. Uh, it's part of the market cycle. So what we're trying to say is. Tesla's on its second year of the market cycle, market cycle down. Upstart, Path, Teladoc, C3AI, Palantir, Coinbase, Mara, all. Um, now, now tech is, so Mara, Mara's on their one year. So let me go through this, sorry. What I mean by one year. First year is your, your company is recovering, people are starting to buy it. It was oversold. Um, there's more money in the market. That's your one year. Your two year is your growth year. Um, this is where you really ramp up growth. Uh, maybe there were sell-offs from the rally, but but this is this is the year where you you really bolster um, your uh, your company. Third year, third year is your, your super wave up, and this is only more of like a half year, right? Um, third year is your holy shit. Uh, this company is actually really good. Uh, FOMO buy-in, people really overpay. Nothing's really going wrong. F third. And a half year, this is where you want you want to sell out before, uh, like even if you miss part of the FOMO, like let's say you sell out here. Look at that. You missed an entire 50% gain, but you saved yourself almost 90%, right? So uh, this that's why you sell it a little bit early, like on the real FOMO. But like for Mara and stuff, we're, we're, we're not even, we haven't even started the FOMO yet. We're, we're still a year behind on Bitcoin. And this is the monthly, right? So... This was the one year, this was the rally. This is one year, right? 2020, one year. 2021, two year. 2023, three year. Or 2022, two year, right? So 2021, 2021, two. Now, this, this was ahead of its time. Bitcoin kind of crashed down after that, right? This is your th half and three year, and this is your fourth year rally. This is your bring it back, and then momentum, and then super squeeze, and then pull back, right? That's how market cycles work. Um, that's what we're seeing in AMD and uh, semiconductors. Uh, super squeeze up. They're going to pull back. Uh, Tesla's in its kind of recovery phase now. Company did a lot. Got very misvalued. Got really overhyped. You're going to have bad market conditions for, for uh, energy stocks. You already saw like end phase energy sell off incredibly. Look at this stock. This was a, a, a fan favorite for a while. Um, a lot of people loved it. 
Look at this clean energy government. Biden gets elected right around here, 2020. Squeeze up. Look at this. Clean energy. They're not getting as much love anymore. Trump could get elected. Election year is a little bit of a bounce because of the economy, but I expect this company to possibly come back down and touch 60, right? Um, especially because it would be a bad market turmoil for a, an ener clean energy stock, right? We're not going to get as much love from the Republicans if they win. Now, if the Democrats win, could see this go back up four or 500, right? So this isn't one of my top stock picks. This is just me explaining how market psychology works. My last one on the list uh, that I really want to talk about, I, I don't want to get too, too deep into the miners because there's going to be so many videos that I, the, all I'm going to be covering is the miners because that's really all I'm in right now is the miners. But these are like my top stocks for 2024. Uh, I'm thinking semiconductor pullback, market shift, into C, uh, tech, into AI, into crypto, right? And why I think that is, I talked to you guys about the Russell 2000 is more of a growth, a crypto, a tech, an AI, a uh, companies that borrow more money. We're in this, this phase, this market cycle of there's more money, interest rates were low, but this is, they borrowed debt, they borrowed a lot of debt, they were overvalued, they weren't really actually good companies. Like these are worser companies, less solidified companies on the market. And you saw this massive pullback into high interest rates and we haven't recovered as much as like Dow Jones Industrial is the number one. It is at all time highs, it is pumping. The, the Dow Jones has, the consumer money is hitting these, these the inflate, this is the inflation money. This is where all the inflationary money is gone. Now the next phase, the next cycle is into chasing assets uh, by the consumer because this is where the consumer money has gone. So my last one, this is a complete gamble. This is a $1.4 billion market cap company, Corsair. Um, saw the pump, 51 IPO, sell off. This is in the tech space. This is a company that's either going to be at like 8 to $3 by 2024 because they just somewhat lose money and don't grow, or this company could be at like 100 bucks a share. Uh, why is that? Well, they sell gaming computers, and if these gaming computers really ramp up and there's, there's the consumer money to buy it, uh, with the semiconductor shift, there's no reason why m money doesn't cycle in from these, these high-level gaming uh, tech computers cycle into Corsair. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I don't know how long this video is. Uh, hopefully, it wasn't too, too long. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. And I will catch you guys in the next one.